In this video, we talk about a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with lists in Python. All right, so let's get into it. Now, before I start, I wanna write a comment at the top here so we can kind of set this in stone. So lists are mutable and ordered. So these data types, lists, tuples, sets, and dictionaries have like mutable and ordered uh, definitions to them. So mutable means that you can change like the elements, the items inside of the list and ordered means that they are in an order of some sort so you can use like the index function. Whereas if it's immutable, you cannot change the value like strings are immutable, meaning you can't just change a character in a string, at least not, not easily. And, and then ordered, if it's unordered, then you can't like identify where it is in the particular list of items that you have. But lists are mutable, which means you can change them and they're ordered so you can identify the exact position something is in. So I wanna put that up there at the top, leave it up there so we remember that because it is an important thing to know. Lists are mutable and ordered. And if you don't quite grasp that concept yet, it's okay. Just know those definitions and that a list is those things. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set a variable for my list, fruit is equal to, and we'll do a list, Lists are set up in brackets like this here. I'll do apples, bananas, oranges, and grapes. So there we go, we have our list of fruits. I'll go ahead and print it real quick. Fruit, I call it fruits, fruits. Okay, so there's our list printed out. Apples, bananas, oranges, grapes. And as you can see, when you print out a list, you can see it prints out the list with the brackets and the apostrophes and commas and so on. So it looks like a list. All right, so the next function I wanna show you is len or length. Now, if you watch a string video, same same one. So except instead of counting the number of characters in a string, we're counting the number of items in a list. So we'll run it real quick. And so we see that we have four items in our list. One, two, three, four. So that's helpful, of course easy way to get the number of items in a particular list. And since these lists are ordered, we can go ahead and pinpoint different items in the list. So if we want to print out the second item in our list, we'd go print fruits bracket one, run it real quick. And so we print out the second item of our list, which is bananas. And in Python, the index starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three. That's why we printed bananas when we entered one there. Uh, if we want to print the first item, we put a zero in there. If we want to print the last item, we can use a shortcut, negative one. So it starts at the back. If you use negative number, we go back two, we print out oranges and so on. So you can use that index number there to select which item you want to, to edit. Also, you can do splits as well. So if you want to do like zero, zero to two, you can run that. And so it starts at zero and it the first one is inclusive, and the second argument here is not inclusive, so it stops at two. So we got zero, one, and then we don't put in the second one. Um, so that's those items, or we do, you know, three, run it like that, or we could do one to three to print, you know, that slice, or we can do a shortcut if we want to start at zero, print it like that, or conversely, we could print it like that to print the end of the list. Now also using the index, we could go ahead and change values in a list. And this is where that mutable word comes into play is we can go be like, hey, instead of grapes, we meant grapefruit. So if we wanna do that, we could do fruits in the negative one position, because we know grapes is the last one. So negative one is equal to grape, grape fruits. And then we'll go ahead and just run and print our fruits out. And so just like that, we've switched out essentially grapes for grapefruits, as you can see in our list printout down here. So that's pretty cool, right? So that way we can go ahead and change out items in a list. And again, that's because lists are mutable. And we can pick the exact location that we wanted to change because they're ordered. So pretty cool stuff right there. Now let's say that we do wanna keep grapes in our list and we actually wanted to add grapefruits to the end of our list. Well, we can do that with the append method. And so to do that, we will do fruits.append and then what we want to append or add to our list. So we wanna add grapefruits to our list. 
run it real quick and you see that it adds grapefruits to the end. So apples, bananas, oranges, grapes, grapefruits. Now if we want to add a word to a particular position in our list, we could do that too. So instead of append, we're going to use the insert method. So insert, and then it's got two arguments. So the first one is where we want to go ahead and stick this new item in. So we could say in position two and run it like that. And now we have apples, bananas, grapefruits in position two, right? Zero, one, two, oranges, grapes, and so on. So that is how to use the insert method right there. Now we could also remove items from our list using the remove method. So we could do fruits, remove, and then the name of the item that we wanna go ahead and remove. So let's just say I wanna remove bananas. Plug that in there, run it. So now we got apples, oranges, grapes, and bananas is no longer in our list. Another method for removing items from a list is the pop method. And it works by removing the last value of in, in your list. So fruits.pop, and then you leave it empty like that, and it removes the last value in your list, which in our case is grapes here. And another method is reverse that reverses the list that we have. So we can do reverse our list. So instead of apples, bananas, oranges, grapes, we got grapes, oranges, bananas, apples. So that is pretty cool, right? Also, there is sorting. So you could sort it alphabetically. So we got apples, bananas, grapes, oranges. And of course, sort also works with numbers as well if you wanna sort your numbers. And if I wanted to sort it the other way, I could reverse it. So to do that, you type in reverse equals to true right in there. And it's actually a capital T, I think. So there we go. So you gotta make sure it's case sensitive. So reverse equals true, and now we're in reverse alphabetical order. Now, one thing to note using the sort or reverse methods, they actually change your list. So they actually change the order of your list. And you might not wanna do that because you might need the list in order for other things. So there's a good reason to not wanna sort your list because you need it in the order that it's in. So another way to sort like the output is to use the sorted function. So what we could do is sorted fruits is equal to sorted fruits. And then print sorted fruits. And let me wipe this out of here. So now our list is in alphabetical order without actually changing the order of our list. So we're just changing the output instead of the list itself. Now a couple other functions we can use are max and min to get the highest value or the lowest value or the alphabetical values essentially. So print, we'll just do max fruits, see what pops out. So oranges. So this is the latest one in the alphabetical order is oranges versus min, min, which is apple. So that's the, the very front. And we can of course do the same thing with numbers. So num equals to, I don't know, that, this, this, this. And so we got min, num, one, max, num is that. Uh, numbers also have a sum, so we can get a sum of all the numbers in a list if we wanted to, just like that. Uh, of course, this doesn't work with words because you know you can't add words together in a list. It just doesn't make sense. It cannot compute. Now we can also get the position of an item in a list using the index method. So to do that, you just type in fruits dot index and then whatever you're looking for in there. So bananas run it real quick and we see that bananas is in the number one slot. Now, if we type something in there that doesn't exist, great, great fruit, we get an error or great fruit, we get an error. So one way to check if something is actually in a list is to use the in function. And so to do that, you could be like apples, apples in fruits, and it gives us a Boolean expression. So true or false. So we run it, apples is in fruits, right? It's right there. Conversely, of course, great fruit is not in fruit. So we get a false. So we could check whether true or false something is in one of our lists, which of course could be very handy. Finally, if we wanted to go ahead and print the items in our list, we could go ahead and do that with a for loop. Now this is like a intro to for loops. I'll have another video on for loops. So there's more to cover on for loops, but 
just using it for printing out a list in this example. So to do it, we would do for fruit in fruits and a colon, and then we would print out the fruit. And so just like that, it goes through our list and it prints out each item in our list. So apples, bananas, oranges, grapes, and so on. So that's nice and easy. We could also print out the index if we wanted to of our, the items in our list with the enumerate function. So to do that, we type in enumerate and we wrap it in parentheses. And this also calls for index um, variable. So we'll throw that in there as well, index. So now we see what position the item is in. So apples is in the zero, bananas is in the one, oranges in the two, grapes in the three, and so on. So that's a way to iterate through your list and print out the, the position something is in as well as what is in that actual position. So we just covered a lot of information on lists, a whole lot of stuff in a short period of time. So you probably feel a little overwhelmed. The point is hopefully you're seeing that there's a lot you can do with lists to organize and sort and add and subtract and all that type of stuff. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful in any way, shape or form, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day.